So we're going to start off in Q file, and uh, we're going to go to Add NAS, and it's going to find nothing except my QNAP uh, NAS unit I have called Dragon. So uh, you, I'll have to flip it around here. Uh, I have the QGenie right here, and it has a code on it, uh, that which shows what uh, I have it switched onto the Wi-Fi mode on the little side thingy here. Slid onto that. You wait for it to start up. I've got the blue light, and it gives me an access point name. So what that means is we got to go to the settings on the phone, and we got to go to Wi-Fi, and you can see all the Wi-Fi networks in the area, and you'll see this QGE17. That is the QNAP or QGenie. Uh, QG, QGenie, and uh, let's just go connect. It's unsecured off the start. Connecting. As soon as we're connected, I believe we should be able to see it uh, using QFile. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay, to stay connected. That's a Samsung feature there. It is trying to uh, tell me, hey, you might not get internet on this. Uh, I'm just refreshing in Q file, and you see it there, and it even has a little icon that's appropriate. Um, all right. Please select login account. Guest login cannot access. Add default password. Oh, that's nice. It tells you right here. Default password for admin is admin. So, oh, it's auto entered it for me. All right. Let's uh, let's go save. We'll connect to it. This is a very, very easy setup. I found, uh, you know, when QNAP first started making Android apps, they were a little bit buggy, but they've definitely gotten a lot better over the years. It is taking its time. One of the things I've kind of wondered is, well, how fast is the processor in this QGenie? It's a pretty tiny little guy. One thing it no neat I'm noticing here on the front of it, it shows how many users are connected. It shows a little guy, a little dancing guy with a one. Gives you the battery life. Yeah. Tells you how much space is used on it. Which on this one it actually says no space is used at all. It says I have access to a formatted size of 31.2 gigabytes. I'm going to go ahead and I've loaded up the web page for it. Uh, I'm going to try this method. We might need to do that in order to uh, oops. just entering in the admin password. Well. So far, oh, there we go, not as slow. Uh, let's not save that password. Um, I'm not gonna set up the password on this video, but I will be setting it up afterwards. Anyway, so that is how you get into here. And you can see all the information here. It says there's no USB, no SD card. Good, good, good. Even shows you the amount of traffic. Wow, like, they put a lot of work into this. So menu, uh, we can go to settings. Um, yeah, you can change the name, awesome. Oh, well, I gotta think of a clever name. You can change the type of addressing, but it sticks you to the 192168 type. You can enable wireless security on it too, which is nice. Recommended to use WPA2, definitely, that it would be the choice. So this is where you'd go to change that. Admin password and Reset, you can do firmware upgrades, but it doesn't. I don't see an option here to upgrade over the internet. Uh, right now, I have no internet technically on the phone, nor the device, because I'm connected to its hotspot. Now, my understanding is, looking under this menu and going to internet, I bet you can configure it uh, 
yeah, wired internet or wireless. So you can connect it to uh, the Wi-Fi and then connect to it and access the media and the Wi-Fi and you can use it as a router. Um, yeah. You can configure all this stuff. Search for wireless internet. And oh, look at this. You can connect to a tethered phone using it or you can search for wireless internet. That's neat. Okay, well, click on that. Oh, you gotta go down here, you gotta search. I'm gonna search for my home network. Oh yeah, look at this. Easy peasy. You can connect to GarageNet. Yeah, I could type, it, type in the key here. Uh, even though I really don't care if you guys connect to my Wi-Fi, I am not gonna <laughs> post that on YouTube. I just have a feeling that's not a good idea. Web folder. What is? Oh, ooh. what on earth? You can see the directory. Oh, yeah. This is the directories. Uh, if you connect the QNAP, QGenie to USB on your computer, you see these come up as a Windows folder directory, just like uh, when you plug in a USB stick. Well, so there, there isn't really a whole ton of things to show you here. Um, kind of went through all the settings. And uh, let's go back to the dashboard real quick. Uh, basically, the stuff that you'd want to set up here is you'd want to set it up so it uh, can work with your Wi-Fi uh, at a hotel or at your home. And you would also want to set up uh, WPA2 Wi-Fi security with this device. Set a password that you can remember. I mean, you're the one using it as unsecure as it would be, you know what, you could just tape uh, the password to the actual QGNE device on the back or something, uh, just because you might not use it all the time, you might only use it on trips, and the last thing you want is trying to figure out a password or resetting a device when you're on the go. Uh, I would also highly, highly recommend you change that admin password so someone else can't just go use admin when, you know, they could. you could be riding on the train or on an airplane and <laughs> someone could see this open access point, connect to it, guess the password's admin, change your password to something that you don't know, and then you're hooped. They could also just silently access your data. Personal pictures, personal information that you have on the device. Scary stuff. Change your passwords, people. Unsecured devices is how uh, certain celebrity photo leaks happen Let's, yeah, let's just leave it at that. That's how, that's how those sort of things happen. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching this video. See you later.